Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 17 of Road to Colonization, and we start on the Minmus Station with the Minmus Miner. If you remember the Minmus Miner last time, we uh, spent most of the episode putting a docking port on it so that it could haul ore up to the station to fulfill a contract, a very lucrative contract. The payout's about 300 grand, and we need that money because uh, we spent quite a lot of money on this latest Duna mission, and we haven't been bringing in a ton of money. But anyway, this is going to head back to the surface to, um, well, refuel the uh, shuttle so that the shuttle can head home, and also start mining more ore so that it can complete this mission. We need 5,000 units of ore on the station, so that'll be three more missions. We'll get one more done uh, this episode, and probably two more in future episodes, and then uh, get our money, because we've had this contract for a while. I take on so many contracts, and then just sort of don't do them. <laughs> um, Although I do do them, they're often just long-term goals for me. Anyway, we've uh, set our trajectory to land next to the fuel shuttle, um, and then we can start mining. Well, start mining, yeah. Um, it's always kind of slightly difficult to precisely land uh, next to this, uh, next to this, next to anything, really. But um, this is much easier than the fuel shuttle because it has a much higher thrust-to-weight ratio. It also has a reaction wheel on it, which makes it significantly easier to maneuver the spacecraft. The uh, the the um, the shuttle turns like an ocean liner, so it's not the easiest thing. But anyway, we uh, start getting close. And then try not to uh, fire our engines at the uh, fuel shuttle, because that might break some solar panels, maybe even knock it over, and that wouldn't be great. But yeah, we land right next to it. That's pretty good. Um, so we're going to fetch our Kerbal, our engineer, out to uh, go and attach the pipe so that we can start fueling up uh, these Kerbals. New to the job, of course. We switched them over last time. We're going to have to move this pipe, because we're in a different orientation. We'll also have to move the port on the... Shuttle, because usually we land, again, in a different orientation. But yeah, they're fairly new to the job, so I'm sure they're very excited to be getting some work done, you know. It's just fairly mundane things now, just just fuel trucking. That's a thing, that's a job in space now. It's become, a, you know, routine almost to uh, do this sort of thing. So we start uh, filling up the liquid fuel tanks, a little bit of oxidizer and uh, monopropellant, because we're pretty low on monopropellant right now. Um, that takes a while, it actually takes, I think, about a day. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, well... We'll just, well, we also need to pump the uh, fuel from the shuttle, from the miner into the shuttle, because there's no point mining that, um, because it just makes it a little quicker. So we deploy our drill, set up our ISRU, all of that fun stuff to start producing, I think, liquid fuel and ox... No, we just do liquid fuel, and then we'll do oxidizer later. I'm just going to fill up that bottom tank with oxidizer, so the Odin station is entirely full of oxidizer, because, um, yeah, it might as well. Uh, because we, we're low on liquid fuel on the station, but not on oxidizer, but, so we might as well just fill it up and not have to worry about it at all. But most of our vehicles do just mostly use liquid fuel because they use nuclear engines. So yeah, we've got that all going, should be good. Probably take a couple of days, so we'll, uh, step away so that the, um, so that the, uh, miner doesn't run out of electric charge. A little bit of, a uh, cheating, but, uh, that's just how the game works. Anyway, so everything's fueled up, so we launch the shuttle into the, I was gonna say into the air, but not really, into the space above the space where we were sitting, because there's no atmosphere on Minmus. Although there's probably, like, a little bit of atmosphere. Interestingly, on the moon in real life, um, there actually is a very slight atmosphere. Um, so slight, though, that the, uh, the engine, the exhausts from the, um, the exhaust gas from the Apollo missions actually significantly increased the density of the atmosphere. Um, anyway, yeah, so uh, we're just going to push our way on into orbit now, and uh, yeah, I actually had a comment last time about, or maybe a couple of times ago, about how I'm saying moon wrong, apparently it's mun. Uh, it's not, though, because yeah, it's spelled M-U-N, but there's a little accent thing above the N, which makes it more like mune. So I'm just going to say moon. I mean, I can call it the moon if you want. I know Matt Lan calls it the, the mun, but he's wrong about that. <laughs> it, it is called the moon. Um, so I'm just going to call it moon because, yeah, just yeah, a bit of comment addressing while we're just um, flying off from uh, Minmus. Leaving now, going back to Kerbin, meeting up with the station. Again, all very routine. We will be on a slight inclination, well, quite fairly intense, a fairly significant inclination because, um, well, because Minmus is on an inclination. So we null that so that we... Uh, get ourselves into the correct, into the correct place, and, uh, yeah, then we just gotta do our fit of various deorbit burns. You do one and then another to slow down. I actually ended up doing three burns, so the first one is just, uh, to slow us down into a reasonable, um, an, orb an orbit with a reasonable period so that we don't take too long to do things, because, you know, there's lots of stuff going on in our space station this ep in our space program this episode. So, yeah, we start slowing down. And talking of comments, I actually did get one last time uh, saying that I should do these in live commentary, uh, which I guess sounds like a valid point until you realize that um, just doing 
the from the start of the episode to when this docks would be uh, forty about forty minutes. So that'll be two episodes just doing not even what we've done yet. Um, each episode contains about two hours and twenty minutes of recording, which I compressed to under twenty minutes with time acceleration and um, well, with time compression. All of this footage is at four times time accelerated, and also a lot of editing. So uh, yeah, unless you want. Um, I mean, unless you want one of these episodes to be done in seven episodes, I, I don't think that's the best idea. But uh, yeah, just addressing comments episode, I guess. No, that was just something I thought I might as well mention. Anyway, after that first bone, we come around again, and it looks like we're not going to slow down in time, so I'm going to get myself into a much lower orbit and meet it and meet the uh, space station in one orbit's time, um, because, yeah, we just don't have the thrust to meet it this time. Uh, we would just buzz right past it. So I prepare myself a maneuver, which ends up looking like this, um, including a prograde burn, which I think I've already done, and then a uh, and then a quick retrograde burn, just to bring our apoapsis to the right place. Then we'll meet up with the station with a fairly slow, well, a fairly small relative velocity, which is quite good because we don't want to be traveling really fast when we meet the station because it's a big station and a big fuel shuttle. Anyway, after a bunch of maneuvering in, we go in and dock to the station, um, but we have much more interesting things to do today, so I didn't think I'd spend too much time on this. And the interesting thing is, well, the uh, Canterbury has arrived at Duna. Yes, we complete one mission, and apparently it's been so long that we failed um, a different mission to do something on Ike. That mission was to test out a massive engine on Ike, which I uh, misread when I took it on ages ago. So we failed that, lost about 200 grand, but we did complete uh, one of the tourist contracts. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but we're now we're 200 grand down, so we need to start making that money back. Anyway, after a nice little planet fall towards Duna, we uh, fire up the engines, and uh, this burn takes a really long time. I have to th throttle the engines up fairly slowly because uh, the spacecraft is unbalanced, so we want the SA give the SAS enough time to uh, catch up. We get a, beauty a little beauty shot of us arriving at Duna. And then, yeah, just about a 45-minute burn, which takes a really, really long time time and uh, you'll see it in a few frames here because uh, uh yeah you know you're not going to want to watch all of that yeah luckily though hank green was doing a stream of him playing guitar so i just listened to that while i uh, watched this get into orbit around duna which again took a while as you can kind of make out from uh, this little these few clips but eventually we null our velocity enough that we uh, slow, that we, there are orbit loops around and we get into orbit. There we are, orbit of Duna. We're going to bring that down and then we're going to come back around and uh, circularize it. This time we've actually put the, uh, oh, we got a, another contract for getting someone to orbit of Duna. We'll get most of that money when we take them home, which will be a while from now. But uh, that's, yeah, just a side mission, really. But anyway, yes, now we are in orbit. It's all rather nice. But as I was saying, we're going to put the orbit of this in the s roughly the same orbit as the resource station, because last time, uh, the last Duna mission, the Concordia, the other spacecraft, was in a much lower orbit, which made it a little inconvenient to dock to the... Uh, to the resource station, so we're going to put this in the same orbit, which costs a little more fuel to get into orbit, um, but it's fine. We're here now, we've got more than enough fuel, and a mining operation will be ensuing fairly soon, so we should be able to refuel the Concordia, no, the Canterbury. I really hope we can, because I'm not sure it has enough fuel to get home otherwise. Actually, I think it probably does just about, but uh, not enough to slow down properly at the other side, so... Uh, yeah, it would be good if we could get some fuel. But yes, eventually we pull our orbit into circular into a circular orbit, and uh, here we are at Duna. Yes, the second mission to Duna is looking to be rather successful. Uh, next episode we can start deploying some things. We still have uh, more craft to bring in, like the Miner, and also the Concordia has something today. Um, but yeah, there we go, in orbit of Duna. But anyway, I got an interesting contract called the Moho 4 mission or something like that, which um, basically challenges me, challenges me to land on the moon, on Minmus, on Moho, and then back on Kerbin. And uh, it sounds kind of difficult, so I'm going to take it on, because it pays out really well and it sounds like a fun challenge. So at some point, we'll be doing that. Anyway, back on Minmus, we uh, have mined enough ore, mined enough fuel, got everything set up. We can start heading back to the station to uh, fill that up with some ore so we can start completing this contract even more. So we line ourselves up roughly, not even slightly correct, but uh, it looked good to me at the time. Um, and we take off. We've Luckily, we've got that little probe down there now that brought the docking port and the RCS um, to this. Uh, which is good, because it leaves us a little marker so we know where to land, otherwise it would be a little difficult. I'd have to do it on memory, and that would be uh, rather annoying. Anyway, 
So yes, again, fairly easy to get into orbit of Minmus. It has a nice low uh, gravitational pull, which is always nice to see. Um, <laughs> although I have mentioned in the past how much I hate Gilly because of its really low gravitational pull. Although I do have a mission to go, um, to do some stuff on Gilly because we're going to head to Eve once the Concordia gets home. My old Duna spacecraft. That'll get home this episode and we'll start preparing it for a mission to Eve. Um, because, yeah, we haven't been to EVE yet. I'm not going to land on EVE because both of my test missions failed. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're actually just going to land on Gilly. Um, but drop some probes into EVE, uh, into the EVE atmosphere. Maybe even a rover. Um, I'll see. Anyway, so we match our orbits and then uh, uh, raise our apoapsis so that we'll meet the station around the other side. Then it's just a matter of uh, letting some time pass, rolling around our orbit, and then uh, meeting up with the station. Although that encounter is wrong, because, well, it's not wrong, it's just not my closest encounter. I'm much closer here, so I realized that and uh, quickly um, get my trajectory heading towards the station. Now, last time I did this, my docking was really difficult. It used all of my, uh, <clears throat> all of my RCS, and I bumped the station pretty hard. So this time I'm going to be a little more careful, line up with the docking port a little better using just my nuclear engines, because... Uh, yeah, we don't want to, well, we don't want to have the same thing last time where I almost failed the dock. Anyway, yeah, so a little more tricky to do it with nuclear engines. You've just got to be a little careful, as I wasn't when I hit the Z key. Um, but yeah, so then we uh, line ourselves up and uh, start moving in. Just even use the engines for that. I, I don't really have enough RCS on this. Um, it was kind of jury rigged on. If you saw last episode, I had some Kerbals. Attached some uh, reaction control thrusters and some monofilament on it. So it's a bit janky. But we do manage to dock and there's a little bit of swaying. But there we go. Now we just need to pump the ore into one of these tanks and all will be good. Um, and then, yeah, after a couple more missions, maybe next episode and the next one after that, probably. Because next episode's going to be really busy um, with Duna stuff. Uh, yeah, then we'll fill up the uh, tank even more, complete our contract, get 300 grand, pay off that failed mission on Ike. Um, really annoying, that mission. It was uh, a mission to use like this giant, I think the mammoth engine or... No, it was, it was something like that though on Ike and I was like, oh, I didn't check the mission properly <laughs> when I took it on like, like uh, episode 20 of Road to Colonization. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a... Bit of an oversight on my part, but hey, it's fine. We got money. We're on about 1.7 million funds, I think, or something like that. So, yeah. Anyway, now we just need to go and land again. And you've seen this like a bunch of times, so I'm just gonna cut to the landing. Through movie magic, here we are, landing on Minmus. Um, <laughs> uh, just a fairly decent landing. Doesn't matter that much where we land because the shuttle isn't here. So, yeah, now we can just start mining again, preparing to complete this mission. It'll all be grand. But anyway, the next part is bringing the Concordia home. Yes, after a long mission to Duna, after doing many fantastic things, after years in space, it is finally heading home to Kerbin. We've got our encounter, we're flying through, we're gonna, I think, encounter the moon. Oh no, we're not, we, we would if we didn't orbit, but we are going to orbit because we these Kerbals want to come home now. They've been on the spacecraft and on Duna for a long time. Rather great mission, started in Road to Exploration, of course, and uh, carried through into this series and yeah this mission this spacecraft has been really good I will reuse it for the Eve mission as I've said we're gonna kit it out with some new equipment and uh, send it on to do more science get more money we have most of the science we need now but uh, it would be good to have a little more money so yeah this is a, a fairly decent thrusted spacecraft because it's quite light and has four nuclear engines so we get into orbit fairly quickly as you can see and uh, yeah, we didn't have to use the high thrust, well, we don't, we can't use the high thrust mode, but this also has a high thrust mode, it has a vector engine on it, which I put on most of my interplanetary spacecraft because it just gives me in more options. So yeah, we pull our orbit in, get into a fairly elliptical orbit, then we're going to loop around and do another deorbit burn. Um, it's a solar eclipse right now, it's a nice greeting to come home, although we are running out of electric charge. Um, although this has only ever had three solar, pa well, it did have four solar panels on it, except I broke one once by... I've forgotten exactly how I broke it, but uh, I did break one of the solar panels, so this has always only had three. Maybe I should replace it before the, issue, the mission to Eve to make it look a little nicer. But anyway, uh, let's not think about that Let's uh, right now. Let's just think about coming home, getting into orbit. These guys will be um, picked up next episode, have some R&R. &R. Some of them will be going to... Uh, some of them, yeah, some of them will be going to Eve. I'm thinking Jeb might... Um, but I'm still mad at him for running a, uh, for having a private business while being under federal employ. That's pretty lame. Um, so, yeah, who knows? I think Val will probably uh, command the mission. Jeb was the commander of this mission, of course. Um, and yeah, so that'll be pretty good. And we also don't need as big a crew for the uh, 
Eve mission because on Duna there were two missions. There was Ike and Duna. We had to land on both, so we needed two, three Kerbal crews. Um, but we're only going to be landing on Gilly, so we could probably bump that down to four or five. Um, means we have to take less life support and just things like that. Uh, and we would have more Kerbals on Kerbin, which is always good. Anyway, we circularize our orbit now so that we can uh, easily be serviced. And all is good. Yes, we are back. We have completed a full round trip to Duna. Very happy with that, um, and these pilots all get lots of experience for flying to Duna. Anyway, talking of Duna, as we tend to do a lot now with this mission coming up, the uh, fuel miner finally gets here um, a few days after um, the, I think it was about a month after the Concord, after the Canterbury got here, and uh, about five days after the Concordia got back. And yeah, it is, uh, it's back. It, not back, it's at Duna. So we're just going to tweak our orbit a little bit because this wants to be in a lower orbit because it needs to conserve as much fuel as possible because it has to go and land because this can't be refueled because this does the refueling. It's not the miner, of course, it's the um, it's the shuttle, so it will be bringing fuel to various places. Um, but yeah, looking pretty good. Um, so we're just going to bring this down, fly it by Ike, which will be nice, and then get into orbit, which will be much quicker than the uh, Canterbury because it's using a very high thrust engine because obviously it needs to be able to take off from Duna with a huge amount of uh, fuel in it. So that's, yeah, pretty good. Anyway, just get into orbit now. Fire up the engine, burn retrograde, and circularize. Duna looking really weird up close. Scatterer makes it look really nice from far away, but really weird from up close. Um, Scatter also has those eclipses, I think. Um, I believe so. And yeah, so that's pretty good. The uh, the next the second Duna mission is in full swing. Next episode will be landing on Duna, setting up bases and setting up mining operations. But that will be in future episodes. And this is the end of this episode. But if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there's the most recent episode of Fighter Jet Showdown in which, well. It's amazing, there's some just crazy fights. There's also my most recent episode of Fall of Kerbin, in which, well, we're a little scared. The Cruelans are coming now, and we've got to really defend ourselves. Um, but yeah, there's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.